Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today we're going to be going over the best weapons in Grand Theft Auto Online in each of the weapon slot categories. Obviously there's a lot of really good weapons in GTA, but there's also a lot of weapons that are a complete waste of money and time to try to get. So in this video I'm going to be telling you what guns you're going to need in each of the categories and why you're going to need them. So anyways, let's get started with the melee category. Now really within the melee category there's only really one weapon that you're going to need and that is the stone hatchet because of its ability that you get whenever you kill an NPC or a player you get an ability for a certain amount of time until you kill another NPC or player and that will reset the ability. This is pretty good, it gives you increased health and a couple of other little bonuses. So the stone hatchet is definitely the best melee weapon in the game. However, there is one exception to this and that is for underwater use just in case you ever find yourself underwater with another player or somebody that you need to stab. The regular combat knife works pretty well underwater, so do the knuckle dusters, but I would definitely take the knife over the knuckle dusters. You'll likely never find yourself in a situation where you will actually need a knife or the knuckle dusters for underwater combat. You should maybe pick one of them up just in case. Next up for the shotgun category, there are quite a few good shotguns in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now the best one for most people in most situations, I would say, is the assault shotgun. This is a automatic shotgun with a 32 round drum mag attachment that you can put onto it, which is insanely good for clearing out close quarters areas where there are a lot of enemies. I would say the assault shotgun is probably one of the best weapons in the entire game overall. It shreds players, it shreds NPCs, it does so much damage and it shoots so rapidly that you will just be be able to clear out anything that you need to. It's definitely a personal favorite of mine. Now an honorable mention I would say is the combat shotgun that came out with the KO Perico heist and the only reason that I'm really including it on this list is because it is a replica of the Spaz 12 from Modern Warfare 2 and I think that that is really cool. However it does have a pretty rapid fire rate and it also has some pretty good range to it as well which I think coupled together make it a very good shotgun to have. But definitely the most overpowered shotgun is the Pump Shotgun Mark II, which can be upgraded within your MOC or your Avenger, or anywhere else that you can have a weapon workshop to upgrade your weapons into their Mark II variants. Now once you have the Pump Shotgun Mark II upgraded, you can also equip it with explosive rounds as well as some other different rounds like incendiaries or dragon's breath, as well as several other things, which are very, very useful and make this shotgun very unique and what it can do for you. Now if you have the explosive rounds on it, it can blow up cars in one shot, typically, unless you're at a really far range or they have some degree of armor, then maybe not. But for the most part, it's gonna one-shot cars, albeit at a very close range. But still, what other shotgun do you know that shoots explosive rounds in GTA? That's it for the shotgun category. These are the three best ones to use. Let's move on to the heavy weapon category. Starting off in the heavy weapon category, we have the grenade launcher. Now the grenade launcher, I think, is actually a pretty good weapon in Grand Theft Auto Online. Definitely one that you should own. And you do unlock this at a relatively low level, so it will give you some very early game explosive access, so that is good. It can also hold 20 grenades, which is pretty awesome. Now the main function of the grenade launcher that I can see is the ability to bounce the grenades off of walls. Now it also has pretty good range, but the grenade bouncing is definitely where this thing comes in to play. Say there's an enemy down an alleyway or something like that, you can quickly step back out of their line of vision so they can't shoot you and you can bounce a grenade off of say a rooftop or a wall and it will ricochet off of the wall and land further down the alleyway and probably kill your enemy. For example, like you guys can see right here, the grenade launcher definitely can be pretty useful for something like this. Next up, of course, we have the RPG. This is another must own. Now you're not going to unlock this until a little bit later in the game, but it is definitely something that you should purchase when you have access to it. The RPG does a lot more damage than the homing launcher, but the homing launcher you get access to from level zero, so that is pretty awesome. However, the homing launcher does have only 10 rockets, whereas the RPG can hold 20 and the RPG does more damage. Now the homing launcher obviously does have some advantages where it is a homing launcher where it can lock onto vehicles and track after them. I will say though right now, the homing launcher is not very good for this. And if say you're fighting against a pretty good pilot, they should be able to dodge a homing launcher pretty easily. No matter if you put 10 after them, they're gonna be able to dodge them eventually. And for this reason, I don't think the homing launcher is that useful. Another real pain with the homing launcher and why I personally personally don't like using it is when you're trying to shoot somebody just free fire it will constantly lock onto cars and other things that are off to the side of your line of vision it's way too sensitive in my opinion with its lock on I think you should have to aim it a little bit more at what you want 
to lock on to if you are trying to lock on to something if not it should just be you know relatively free fire but unfortunately that's not how the homing launcher really works now the one advantage that the homing launcher does have is it does have a much better range than the rpg it can shoot probably twice as far if not maybe even a little bit more than twice as far so that is something good about the homing launcher and the missile also does fire a little bit faster so there you have it that's it for the RPG and the homing launcher. But of course, now we have to talk about the minigun and the Widowmaker. Now, if you're going to have one of these two guns, you should not buy both. Definitely don't buy both. I have both and it's a complete mistake. I wish that I never bought the Widowmaker. Now, the thing that they bait you into with the Widowmaker is that you can get it from level zero. You don't have to have a level requirement like you do for the minigun. However, the Widowmaker is worse in one glaring way. Say you're on the ground and you are trying to fight against a jet who's in the sky using your Widowmaker. If you shoot up in the air with your Widowmaker, it shoots red laser beams. Now, they shoot right out of the gun and they go, obviously, in pretty rapid succession. So it basically puts a line right from your gun, from the tip of your Widowmaker, all the way up into the sky. Now, if you're a jet pilot and you see this, oh, let's go to the start of where that line is and that's where I will find the guy shooting the Widowmaker at me and then you die. And if you keep doing it, you die repeatedly. And if you do it at nighttime, it's even worse. So this is why I recommend the minigun. They, they honestly do about the same damage, but the red lasers are a glaring issue with the Widowmaker because they'll point anybody exactly where you're shooting it from. Doesn't matter if you're fighting somebody on the ground, doesn't matter if you're fighting somebody in the sky, they will be able to see where you're shooting from without any sort of an issue. And that's why I don't recommend the Widowmaker. Although you can get it from level one, it's not worth doing. I would just save up your money and wait and purchase the regular minigun. They both do about the same damage, but the minigun doesn't shoot red lasers. So it's a little bit better in my opinion. Another honorable mention I would say for the heavy weapon category is the newly added railgun. You can get this from the gun van that appears randomly on the map in certain event weeks. You won't be able to get it all the time, but you should definitely go and check whenever you have the ability to. It does a little bit less damage than the RPG, but it is pretty much instant. It doesn't take very long for the rail to actually reach its target. Although it does a little bit less damage, it will still one shot pretty much any vehicle or any helicopter, as long as they don't have armor. The railgun also gets 20 shots, and overall I would say it is slightly worse than the RPG, but it definitely has its place in GTA and you should own one if you have the ability to. Another honorable mention I would say is the compact grenade launcher. You can use it on the back of motorbikes and things like that and shoot grenades and it's pretty useful overall I would say. But that's it for the heavy weapon category, let's move on to the throwables category. In the throwables category, really, you, there's only three that you're going to need, and those are grenades, sticky bombs, and proximity mines. Grenades are useful, and the only reason I include them on this list is because of that thing that I talked about with the grenade launcher, where you can bounce them off of things. For example, you can throw them above somebody's head, and they will drop down right at their feet, and then blow them up. You can also use this when you're on top of a building and you know somebody's down below you. You can throw it at the wall, it'll drop down, and it'll land at their feet. The timer on the grenade is pretty long, so the higher you throw it, the more likely it will be detonating as soon as it reaches the ground. So the more time between throwing it and hitting its target, the better, kind of. So grenades are useful for this. Sticky bombs are obviously useful. You can throw them out of vehicles. You can also throw them on foot, obviously, and you detonate them when you want to. They are very good against the Presser Mark IIs, if you're in a vehicle. If you're driving around in a car and you throw a sticky bomb, the sticky bomb will get extended range based on how fast the car is going. So this is very, very useful, especially for taking out Mark IIs that are coming at you head on. You can definitely use this tactic to get Mark IIs. You should try it out for yourself. It's actually a lot easier than you would expect. So definitely give that a shot. And of course, proximity mines, you throw them down and when a vehicle touches them, they blow up, which I think is pretty much needless to say, that is kind of useful. So that's it for the throwables category. Everything else is kind of, you know, basic. You don't really need anything else here. Let's move on to the pistol category. And within the pistol category, really the only one that you're gonna need is the AP pistol. This is the best drive-by weapon in the game. It has 36 rounds in a mag with the extended mag on, so you should definitely equip that if you have the ability to. The AP pistol is pretty accurate. It's definitely fun to use on foot. It's definitely fun to use in a vehicle. Overall, it is a great pistol to have in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, there is one more pistol that you should own in the game, and that is, of course, the Up and Atom 
stabilizer. This will get your vehicles unstuck very, very easily, which can be a complete lifesaver. For example, I've done the nightclub sale missions many, many times, and I've had the largest truck stuck a very good many times going down hills into Blaine County. Now, if you have the up and atomizer, you can simply boop it and it will knock the truck unstuck or whatever your sale vehicle may be, or just your personal vehicle. If you get it stuck somewhere and you can't get back into it, you can use the up and atomizer to boop it and make it so that it is back on its wheels again so that you can hop back into your vehicle and keep driving. Up and atomizer is definitely a worthy purchase. It's gonna cost you a lot of money, but it is 100% worth owning for sure. And the AP pistol. Those are the two pistols you need. Make sure you own both of them. Next up for the LMG slash SMG category, there's only one weapon that you're really gonna need here and that is the Combat Machine Gun Mark II. The Combat Machine Gun Mark II is actually the highest damaging automatic weapon in Grand Theft Auto Online behind obviously something like the Widowmaker or the Minigun. It does the most damage per shot and it will kill the player the fastest. It's also got some pretty good range and if you use it in first person, the recoil is not nearly as bad as it is in third person, although I don't really notice much difference. I personally always prefer to shoot in third person I don't see a first person as a super big advantage other than the ability to roll a little bit quicker and move side to side a little bit quicker. But the Combat MG Mark II is definitely the best weapon to use in the LMG or SMG category. You can also equip it with aftermarket rounds as well because it is a Mark II weapon so you could put incendiaries on it, armor piercing, stuff like that. It is good to have but I don't personally like to use it because it really limits your ammo capacity and I like to use the Combat MG Mark II with the most ammo that I possibly can. If you get the extended mag on this thing as well it can hold 200 rounds in a mag which is absolutely insane so yeah the combat mg mark ii definitely the best lmg or smg slot weapon in the entire game it's the only one you need to own definitely pick this thing up if you don't have one already in the assault rifle slot we have the carbine rifle mark ii which is arguably the best assault rifle in the entire game however i would argue that for lower level players the special carbine mark one or mark ii is a very very good second option now the Mark 1 for lower level players who don't have an MOC or an Avenger or anything to upgrade their weapon to their Mark 2 variants, I would definitely say the Special Carbine Mark 1 is your best bet because it does have an equipable 100 round drum mag on it, which is very useful to have, especially in the early game when you're going to be missing a lot of shots because your shooting skill is a little bit lower. However, if you are a established player in GTA and you have a MOC or an Avenger or somewhere to upgrade your weapons to Mark 2, the Carbine Rifle Mark 2 or the Special Carbine Mark 2 are both pretty solid options you can put suppressors on them as well as many other attachments and they will perform very well even at a sizable range so that's pretty much it for the assault rifle category everything else is not that great and now moving on to the final category that we have to talk about it is of course the sniper rifle category within the sniper rifle category there's only one weapon that you actually need to own and that is the heavy sniper mark ii if you don't have access to mark ii weapons yet just make sure it is the heavy sniper the marksman rifle is an honorable mention but i overall wouldn't recommend picking it up because it's just not as good as the heavy sniper mark ii however you can spam it so that is kind of good the heavy sniper mark ii though is very very useful because of course you can put different ammo types on it like incendiary or armor piercing as well as explosive ammo now explosive ammo is very popular in grand theft auto online you can use it to take down jets at a sizable range and it's only going to take a couple of shots even if you hit one it's going to pretty much disable the jet and it will crash very shortly after same with helicopters things like that I personally don't use explosive rounds or any sort of special ammo on my Heavy Sniper Mark II because I like the ability to have as much ammo as possible without having to go back to my MOC or Avenger or Weapon Workshop of any kind to refill on my ammo for the explosive rounds or whatever it is. So I just rock with the extended mag because I think it's very useful. I also personally like to use the thermal scope because you can very quickly toggle in and out of thermal over and over again. Now you can do this with combat helmets that have the night vision or the thermal vision but I don't find them that easy to switch in and out of. So I prefer to have the thermal scope on my sniper. It does negate the range a little bit. I can't see as far as some people can with their heavy snipers, but with the thermal, I find that it is just fine. And if I'm shooting at somebody who's that far away anyways, I probably shouldn't be shooting at them. So yeah, you can choose the advanced scope or the thermal scope. I just prefer thermal myself. I have it unlocked in Bunker Research and I figure might as well use it. Anyway guys, that is it for the best weapon loadout in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. Definitely make sure that you guys change up your weapons. You can make custom slots as well. 
and hide certain weapons that you don't want. You can do this anywhere that has a gun locker. For example, you can do it in your CEO office. You can also do it in your agency as well as many, many other properties that have access to gun lockers. So definitely take all these weapons, put them in a custom loadout so you don't have to scroll through and find the weapons that you actually do want to use all the time. You can just eliminate all the guns that you don't want and you can enable or disable your custom weapon loadout as you see fit within the interaction menu. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, a like is of course appreciated. If not, dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and I will see you all in the next one. Until then, take care. Peace.